So, interesting news from within the techno space, techno scene, the space, the scene, the culture, whatever it may be. Very interesting developments over the last few days or whatnot. So, over the last few days, this guy called Nicholas Rose on Instagram basically detailed a very disturbing experience that he had partying at the now um, newly minted River Sudus, how do you pronounce it? Riviere Sudus, which is now the new version of Grease Milo, which queues close sometime last year and you know it's been met with a lot of um great feelings everyone's had a lot of great things to say about it great write-ups um not really seen the inside of it of course with um berlin's or germany's famed no pictures no photo policy but from their programming and the way they're approaching stuff and it's like, and the fact that most of the original grease Mueller team moved over to river studios you would assume that they would kind of you know launch this place it would be a great safe space for people to go and rave and do their thing but this guy nicholas is basically accusing um um, the complete opposite of what happened there right and he's basically posted a couple of days ago or maybe a few days ago on his instagram story the following he says today i'm coming forward publicly um, with my experience of racism homophobia from the new grease Miller crew i had the most traumatizing experience and i must speak i have always spoken up about discrimination and what went through early monday morning was nothing short of an experience being targeted stay tuned and i don't know what that word is at the end i guess it's a german word that's what he basically put out there and um, for the most part, I've only heard good things about Grease Müller. Sorry, about the new Grease Müller, right? The River Suders. I've not really been there, of course, myself due to pandemic. I haven't been able to go to Berlin and do my regular yearly trip over there. But for the most part, I've only heard really good things. The only other negative I've heard from afar has been the um, the, the kind of lack of volume in there because i guess it's near a residential area or maybe because they're doing open air parties i think after a certain time they have to limit the sound or there's a limiter on it or for the entire duration of the event but whatever that's the only thing i've really heard i've not even heard anything bad about the queues everyone's kind of got in pretty well i've not heard anything else you know negative about it. this is the first time i've heard specifically a bad story pertaining to it so let's hear what he has to say himself and the video itself is fairly long it's 13 minutes i won't play the whole thing but this is um nicholas uh, posted a igtv video statement on his instagram page basically detailing the entire experience um i'll read the caption it says my awful experience at river Sudas. this is my experience from the last time there at the new grease miller at the cyanide event which is something we need to keep on uh, mind the cyanide event it says i will not tolerate any racism homophobia or hyper masculine energy and you shouldn't either the pain i feel is real i won't give up and i'll continue to stand up for people like me in berlin and beyond you be better believe it this is real and happening in what is supposed to be the most open-minded city in the world show me the receipts after show me the receipts after Alter, was it alter? I don't know. Racism thrives in violence and silence. Share your experience. I'm with you and always stand with you. Right. So let's play um, a little bit of the video and then I'll give you my thoughts after. So today I'm going to talk about my experience at the new Gleese Mula at the Sinoid party uh, a few days ago. It was disgusting what I dealt with, and I think that it is very important that as many people as possible hear what I went through and experienced because based on my identity and just who I am, I've experienced a lot of things that the average cis white person probably wouldn't even have nightmares about experiencing. I wrote out a little bit of some notes to- A little bit dramatic, but we get the point. Just keep things in proper chronological order. And I'm gonna keep it pretty cut and dry so you get the facts and it's up to you to decide how you feel about it. So. Between the hours of 3.15 and 4.15 a.m. on August 15th, going into the next day, I attended Sinoid at Gleesmila. It was fun the first several hours, and around the hour of 4 a.m. it became very fucked up. As they were very strict about masks, and that's understandable, the way in which they treated me was nasty and unexplainable. As I stood in line for the bathroom to obtain water after dancing several hours, I was approached by one of the crew, and I told I was not wearing my mask properly. As he said that I responded and I haven't even taken off my mask at all. He replies that it needs to be a little bit more up. And I explained to him that my nostrils weren't even showing in the slightest. It's pretty much like this. The mask entailed, uh, it went a little bit further down my nose, uh, simply to the point of my nostrils. At that moment, a little bit confused, I replied, okay, I don't see what the issue is, but uh, please explain because it's still in my face. To which he replied, if you wish to drink anything, you have to be sitting down. And my response was, I have been dancing for three hours straight, and I asked if it would be okay if I sat down in this particular spot on the ground and uh, have some water there. 
He says, okay. So I go ahead and I sit down on the ground to take my water. And I think at this moment, he may have taken it as a joke. So I stand up to finish my drink of water before I walk off. And at that moment, he opens up a conversation with my friends in German, completely excluding me, which does also tend to happen out here. I say to them, can you translate this conversation to me? Because I don't know what's going on right now. He ignores me and walks away. I, I talk to my friends and they say, you know, they don't think he's very happy that you uh, sat down and drank your water. So just be patient for a second. Uh, all of a sudden, he brings this very big, heavy, cis German white dude over to me and asks me if I can speak German or English. I said, I don't speak German. I only speak English and I would appreciate it if you can continue to speak English for the duration of this conversation because uh -oh. your other colleague is excluding me purposely from a conversation that I know is directly about me. Refusing to speak English and then also knowing fluently how to speak English is crazy to me. <laughs> he says to me, listen, I don't care. I'm going to ask you a simple question again. Do you speak English or German? So I respond and listen. Uh, I respond and say, uh, listen, dude, do you not hear me? Are you not listening to what I just said? He said, yeah, I heard you. Uh -oh. uh, but answer the question. And I said, well, I speak English. Uh oh. He says, well, you're wearing your mask inappropriately, and we have noticed that this is an issue. You need to wear your mask properly, or there will be consequences. I said, listen, dude, my mask. Anyway, you get the point, right? So, if we're being honest, I think this entire situation is a great il illustration or example of how spoiled people are in Berlin when it comes to clubbing, which is great. It's a good thing, actually. Think about it, it's a good thing. Because the good thing is, is that. These guys are so not used to being accosted or pulled up or harassed on the dance floor by security or anybody pertaining to the club that any kind of affront, especially during the pandemic times when it comes with specific has to come with masks, which are basically is part of the law, right? If they don't um, enact the law or make people put their mask on and they can't do certain things, it's going to affect their license. So they, they are basically incentivized and it's basically within their best interest to make sure that they are make, making people abide by the law. But even under these times, they still feel really, it's like on a personal affront when somebody taps you in the shoulder and tells you, hey, put your mask on for hire because you don't want anyone touching you anyway because you're so used to clubbing in Berlin where as long as you get past the security and you're able to get past the door picker, you're basically fine to do exactly what you want, right? Whether it's pissing on someone's face or fucking someone in a dark room, you're free to do what you want. Sexual liberation, carefree, no pictures, no video. You get to enjoy and, in you know, all your, you get to basically enjoy all your fantasies, rave, dance, do whatever you need be, head nod chin chin scratch whatever you can do it over there with little to no interruption but this is standard practice here in the uk or in london specifically and i think in general in pandemic times you would imagine he should be a little bit more forgiving to the idea that maybe people are going to be a little bit more tense especially considering that they might have had you know um situations where neighbors have basically petitioned that they're going to take away their license and the fact that we're living again in such a tense time people are going to be a little bit on edge and your raving experience might not be as carefree and as loose as you would want it to be sorry you want it to be because we're living in pandemic times and if you do want that carefree sort of do what you want um atmosphere then maybe go to a legal party but again you've run the risk of maybe contracting covid and whatnot so i know where the, the risk remain but also if you go back to that the kind of core of this issue it was that little tete -a tete he had with the bouncer or whoever it is that came up to him that essentially caused a problem and any place I've been, any club, any place, usually for the most part, if you get yourself into an argument with the security, usually you lose. There is no scenario I've ever been, regardless of the club, regardless of the country, where I've ever got into some sort of argument or back and forth, an answering back session with a security or a door picker or a bartender even sometimes, right? When you're getting a little bit too loose and you're getting, you think you're being funny to a bartender, but clearly you're annoying them and they get someone to tell you to sort off, right? It can happen when you get too drunk or you're too high. It never ends well when it comes to you, the patron, going in there. So most of the time you should behave yourself and whatever the security or the bouncer or the the door picker says usually goes because you want to make sure that you can stay in this club for as long as possible because you pay the entry free the last thing you want is to get chucked out because of a little miscommunication you had in the toilets especially when it comes to just putting your mask on put your mask on shut up and you wouldn't have had an issue completely now i do understand the other side of things where he feels like he's been picked on because i've had that things happen to me too where for whatever reason you are the person that they want to go and search really deeply you're the person that they want to go and check the toilet cubicle of you're the person do you know what i mean it can be 
it can sometimes feel a little bit like you're being harassed like somebody is basically keeping their eye on you from afar when everyone else is doing just as bad or maybe worse as you in the club itself but again i don't care because I've purposely gone there to go and rave. I've not gone there for anything else. I've not gone there to see that person or to see that security guard. I've gone there essentially to listen or to see a DJ play. I've gone there to go and dance. I've gone there to go and lose myself, to maybe celebrate something, to maybe cap the end of a week, whatever it may be. I want to ensure that I'm on my best behavior as possible to ensure that I can stay in that place. That's it. And I think going back and forth with a security guard, going back and forth with the bouncer is always going to lead to the situation where you get involved in the back and forth. And who knows? Maybe be in that back and forth the person that came over to you might have said something that could be related to homophobia that could be deemed as racist or whatever it may be but i have a hard time believing that a club of this caliber um with the reputation that it has and the fact that the previous club greece Mueller, had one of the most legendary queer night clubs or sorry um club nights there in um um in cocktail day more right um which i went to once and which i specifically went to to berlin to go visit once before which i didn't get in that time i read an article by daniel wang that he wrote for electronic beats a few years ago so fantastic essay if you can find it definitely check it out and it basically spoke about how amazing grease Mueller was as a partner to this collective that put on this party in grease Mueller called cocktail day more where it's a basically a celebration of the queer lifestyle and it was an amazing place right they only had good things to say about it like a long-standing event they, only, they recently i think had their first event at the new river Sudus recently too or maybe a uh, second third I'm, I'm not too sure but i just find it difficult to believe that a club that is so kind of closely linked to the queer scene in berlin would also be the same place that's going to be racist and homophobic to somebody especially in the pandemic times especially when it comes when you kind of go to anticipate of the core of the argument which was that he didn't have his mask on properly again i know it's annoying i know it's intrusive i know you don't want somebody coming up to you and touching you and do whatever i know but in general we are living in different times you just have to conduct yourself differently when it comes to going out in a club it just is what it is but it just show how detached and how foreign it is for people in berlin to be raving and for them to have security guards come up to them because you know if, if you're from london you'd know there's always time on an occasion where someone will come by with a flashlight right as you're raving somewhere to check if people's hands and make sure people are not doing bumps on the dance floor there's always security walking around there's always the presence of security you just learn to kind of you know ignore it as you're raving but when you go to the countries like or you go to places like berlin you know and they and they kind of take clubbing very seriously they are very um they are very hell bent on providing a somewhat safe space so that as soon as you pass those doors and you've gone past the search and you've been you know frisking need, you know where need be and you've got your stamp you are free to do whatever you want but for some reason you know people haven't necessarily adjusted to this new reality of being at the moment and i think towards the end he mentioned something about being chucked out on the street naked and only having a fong on because he wasn't able to get his stuff in the cloakroom which again un it's an unfortunate event but you know no one told you to go to a club with a fong on you went with a fong on because you felt like you were safe that's something to note you're not going to go to a club like that dressed the way he is and being safe and you know being expressive and living your best life if he didn't feel somewhat safe so he did that and of course when you get chucked out of a nightclub unfortunately it's never done in a correct manner it's never done in a very logical way you don't get the chance you just to say bye to your friends or pick up all your stuff you're just done in the very just get the fuck out of here because usually it's off, it's off the back of some sort of argument or indiscretion that you've done so that shouldn't really be something that you should be beating over the head too much i do feel like this could have been dealt with in a better way but again everyone's got their fitness to go through so that was a video obviously complaining about or it's kind of stating what happened then came the statement from from river Sudus, which i don't think was the best statement in the world this is the first statement i think this probably made matters far worse than it needed to be so the first statement that they put out was first of all thank you for the taking time and attention to engage us with such a sensitive manners your feedback oh no is this the first one or that the first one what's the first one? no this is the first one yeah this is the first one that was the other one the first one is this one i think so i think so yeah, this is the one. The first one was update on the current situation last Saturday at River Sudus. It says, after we became aware of the incident yesterday from our social media, we contacted Nicholas and are in direct dialogue. Internally, we are dealing with the matter with the utmost urgency and in communication with our team. The staff involved in the incident have been suspended by us until the matter is closed, which I thought was crazy, right? I thought for having a little tete-a-tete -tete with a security guard um, and whatever was said in an argument gets said in an argument, but for you to then take that to social media and kind of use it as a battery 
bring Ram to basically denigrate the entire club and basically throw into question their entire you know existence and then have somebody suspended I think was OTT I think if again if it was me and I felt personally offended or affronted you could have easily DM'd them emailed them gone to them the next day and spoken directly and if you didn't reach a resolution that way then of course air them out on social but for someone to get suspended off the back of a argument that people have you know I'm sure security or bouncers have arguments with patrons and customers of clubs all the time especially if they're inebriated or high I guess it happens all the time for it to be a situation where you get suspended from it especially at a place where you know people take those jobs kind of seriously it's a whole economy out there infrastructure and whatnot it does feel a little bit over the top but I guess they needed to do something in order to kind of push back from some of the negative reaction online and it continues, it says, the next slide, it says, there is no space for discrimination, racism, homophobia, transphobia, or queerphobia, River Sudus, that's how you pronounce it, River Sudus, or Sodost, however you say it, um, Rivier, let's, let's, let's leave it at that, it says, the concerns and interests of minorities and marginalized groups are very important to us, we protect, support and the community beyond the club activities, in order to enable and maintain the safe space, we are taking the currently applicable corona measures, in particularly mask obligations very seriously, which is true, right, I think of every other posts i've seen them advertising nights they've always been very strict and very forthright about making sure everyone knows you have to wear your mask wear your mask wear your mask pcr test whatever it may be lateral flow test they're very very pushy with that over there in germany it makes complete sense but in that entire essay you didn't see a sorry you didn't see it they didn't really apologize in any way shape or form so i think people naturally felt a little bit affronted by it and obviously you can see a, a kind of very popular instagram profile um called running order berlin one of the first comments says how many staff members did you quote unquote suspend please be precise and write a real apology tell us who you will make sure the aggression will stop how will you educate the remaining staff blah blah blah, blah. people are really angry right and then they came back with a second reply to basically counteract some of the negativity they were getting online and said the following first of all thank you for taking the time and attention to engage us with your sensitive matter your feedback will not be ignored and furthermore such pressing issues will not be um, solved with a statement so i guess they realized you know they couldn't necessarily get away with a wishy-washy reply because essentially they're talking to their customer base right they're talking to people who they want to come and attend their club and the fact that there's no tourist you can't really afford to piss off people who live there and want to rave because if they decide to boycott your club your club is done because there's no tourist to kind of make up for those numbers so they basically went back to the drawing board and put a statement that was a little bit more forgiving it says this for those reasons we have suspended all club activities right so if it wasn't bad enough that he got some a person suspended from their job because they got into an argument that turned in that got rude or whatever maybe he now has resulted in the club suspending all their activities for the foreseeable future which kind of prevents certain DJs from being able to get paid it prevents people from being able to get paid and work bartenders security um, people that work in the cloakroom like this is how it's negative because of your one experience that is what you call entitlement I think in my opinion again there is occasions where you just have to get your story out there if you've been physically harmed there's something egregious but i just think in this regard a miscommunication maybe male energies getting the best of people too much sass whatever it may be it doesn't equate or it doesn't i think justify this level of response making that kind of video was in my opinion was a little bit insane especially if you haven't reached out to the club themselves directly and now look what's happened you made one person lose their job and I'm sure people in the local scene know who that security guard is who you argued with. So that person's been, you know, they've got now a black mark over their head and now you've suspended the entire club activities for a foreseeable future, negatively affecting all the artists that are going to perform there and the people that work there during the pandemic when people have been without a job and without a purpose and without a place to go and connect and vibe with their community. I just think it's insane. It continues. It says this weekend in order to fulfill, to fully concentrate on assessing and solving these issues. All tickets already purchased for the weekend will be automatically refunded imagine the amount of money that they're having to refund money that they haven't been able to make for i don't know a year or so consistently then having to refund automatically because they feel like they have to solve this issue behind the scenes because they know long term if they don't get this right then it could negatively affect the club going forward god almighty we understand that those subject matters reaching much further than our club and the solutions will not be found in short-term thinking but let us be clear we are aiming for new standards and hoping to become an ex uh, an exemplary force in leading the way forward which is honorable right there is something honorable about it but the fact that they're having to sacrifice themselves off the back of somebody's argument one person had an argument had a falling and again it wasn't the whole crew from what i remember from the video he got chucked out and his friends didn't even go with him he just got chucked out on his own which says a lot about his friends anyway right look at your friendship circle in that regard but it wasn't like his whole entire crew got discriminated against 
it was his one experience that he had unfortunately it does happen sometimes you cross the paths with the wrong person in the club and suddenly your night goes from being the best night in the world to the worst it can happen at times but is that a real justification to denigrate the entire club to make it seem as if they have an issue with people of your ilk completely and to make it seem as if they're transphobic when again they're one of the leading forces and again they have one of the most famous well-known club nights hosted within their club that has a you know, long-standing legacy and relationship with them it just seems utterly utterly unfair it continues as we're fully aware of the challenges ahead of us and we wish to express our most sincere apologies for all inconvenience and trauma and pain we have caused and the other thing that made me think as well that way it's unfair because if you think about this this is mostly a cyanide problem and if I'm not mistaken, again, from afar, I'm speaking from London, but at times I've kind of wanted to go there. Whenever I've read comments and stuff about them launching events and putting stuff out there, I've always seen people moan about the treatment they've received and they went to a sign up party regardless of where it's hosted because I'm sure it's been at different places. Um, they've complained about not being able to get in They've complained about not being able to buy tickets. I think they do that a lot. Sometimes where they'll put out they'll put out a av advertisement that says the tickets are going to launch at 9 a.m. But then the tickets launch at 7. They sent their friends a link prior and they all get sold out before they're able to go and get general release. So there's always been a little bit of skullduggery, a little bit of shiftiness, a little bit of weirdness that's associated with that side note pie. But I guess because they're the cool kids, they're like, you know, they're like yeah they're basically the cool techno kids that everyone wants to be associated with people kind of don't really say too much because they want to get to the next party they want to be able to get on the next list on the next guest list for the next rave wherever they put on but it is kind of unfair that all this blame is being placed mostly on the new grease Müller and not on the promoters who put on that party who basically in my opinion are the ones that created an atmosphere that led to that tense exchange happening between Nicholas and whoever that security guard was. That's what I think generally happened. I don't think it was a specifically just a River Sudos thing. I don't think a Rivier Sudos. I don't think it was. I think it was mostly to do with the Synod party. But again, no mention of them has been made really for the most part. It's mostly been done mostly to the club. And I'd be like, come on, man. Because everyone complains about Synod. Everybody complains. Tickets, the people, the DJs being too high and smashed on stage. I'm not going to name any names. People complain about those guys all the time. And now they're specifically laying the blame at them. And I just, honestly, I just can't understand the entitlement that would lead you to go to a place where you want to have the complete club shut down. And now people are not able to make money. It just, I don't know. It's just insane. It really is insane. Surely they could have had a conversation behind closed doors in private and they come to some sort of resolution. Surely, right? You'd think so. You'd think so. But anyway, here we are at the moment. River Sudus is, I guess, going to be closed for the foreseeable future. It says here in a statement. Um... Da, da, da. yeah what this says at the end um may this be a tipping point and an example for the new standard may our house be a house for all once again we hope to reopen our club soon but please understand we might need a bit of time it'd be funny if they make that as a statement or a little phrase they put on a t-shirt may our house be a house for all once again that'd be funny raising money for a pacific charity or whatnot but i don't know i just think it's gr way ott super over the top I understand sometimes you can have really terrible experiences, especially if you're somebody from the LGBTQ community. I'm sure you'll have to be keenly aware of where you basically go and rave to ensure you have safe experiences. But it's hard to justify um, or to legislate or to believe that a very prominent club like this is going to be homophobic or, or racist. It's just hard to, to make that make sense, especially when you see the people who are booked there, the people that work there. It just doesn't make any sense. But I, I can understand it can be different reality over there because I'm not there. Da I'm not there daily. I only visit, you know, every year so and so. So I'm sure there's more things that, to it. But it's just sad to see a situation where effectively people who have been out of a job, who have been without that community of going to a dance, uh, well, what a nightclub for the for lack of a better term, are now going to be without it because of one person's shit experience. It just seems grossly unfair to me. But again, maybe I've been wrong. Let me know in the comments down below.